Welcome back to Teacher Talks. I'm Maria Keffler. And I'm Erin Brewer. And what's our topic today, Maria? We're going to talk about the social contagion aspects of rapid onset gender dysphoria. I think this is something that doesn't get enough coverage. So for someone who's never heard that term, social contagion before, what does that mean? Social contagions are really well known. It's when kids or really anyone, it doesn't have to be a kid, picks up the behaviors or the um, expressions of somebody else. We've seen social contagions uh, before, even yawning. Yawning is a social contagion. If I yawned right now, probably within a few seconds, you would. And quite likely some of the people who are watching this are yawning right now because it's a very suggestive behavior. So it's it's a documented fact that this can happen, and we're seeing it. Lisa Lippman actually did some research, and she showed that this is a component of a transgender identity, that it's not uncommon for one child in a peer group to adopt a transgender identity, and suddenly all of the peers in that group are also adopting a transgender identity. So this is a very different than, than traditional gender dysphoria, which is something that a child generally experiences for a long time, there's a history. This suddenly, this usually comes out of the blue and it can be really confusing to those around the child who, who think, well, this child never um, even seemed like they, they thought they were the opposite sex. What, what's going on here? And, and that's a good indication that it's actually a social contagion. And it can happen quite quickly. I spoke with the director of a camp who does a one week camp, one week and two week uh, summer camp for kids. And at the end of the summer, he called me, had many instances of having transgender identified campers. Mm -hmm. And he said, at the end of the week, other kids in the cabin were announcing that they were also trans, or he'd get calls from parents a few days after camp and say, what happened? My child came to camp, came home and said that they're transgender or non-binary. And this director said, this is contagious. This is contagious. I said, yeah, it absolutely and is. In this case, I think it's especially contagious because not only is it a social contagion, but when a child comes out as, you know, announces their trans identity, oftentimes they're just celebrated both within that peer group that has suddenly accepted this idea that trans identities exist and should be celebrated, but also within their wider school community and also within their social communities outside of school. They are often really just a celebrated, given lots of affection, affirmation, and told how how brave and authentic they are. So that really reinforces the social contagion in a way that often other social contagions aren't reinforced. And when I think about what's happening in schools, especially with young kids, once a child announces a transgender identity, as you said, that child gets all of this affirmation and support, and they're really given carte blanche to make all the decisions. They're put in the driver's seat. We have seen kids get teachers fired for not using the name the child wanted, not using the pronouns the child wanted. If you remember being in middle school, how unsettling it can feel, how you feel like maybe you're alone or you don't have the social power that you might like to have, when you announce a transgender identity, you have all the power. Nobody can criticize you. Nobody can question you. Nobody can do anything that you don't want them to do. That's a huge, heady amount of power for a kid. And I don't know many who wouldn't like to have that kind of power. Well, and it's also a great opportunity for a child who's got some difficulties. You know, all children are struggling with some kind of difficulty. And so this is an opportunity to completely remake themselves. They get to essentially become a totally different person. And most children really enjoy that opportunity. We know little kids like to pretend that there's something else. That's one of the most favorite things little kids like to do is play pretend. Older kids often will, you know, they'll maybe go from Elizabeth to Betty to Beth to Ellie, playing around with names, playing around with identity. So that's a really common thing for children to do. The problem in this case is when they announce their transgender identity, it's not just that sort of experimenting with how they look or experimenting with new names or new behaviors, sort of trying out a new personality, it's actually pushing them towards a very dangerous path, which involves lifelong medical medicalization and mutilation of their body. So this is a very different kind of social contagion than perhaps when, you know, a kid decides to wear a safety pin in a ear instead of an ear piercing or something. This is something that has lifelong repercussions. 
It does. And it's so insidious because at this time in kids' lives, that is one of the things they should be doing. We know this from educational psychology. In the middle school and high school years, kids are experimenting with who they are, trying to figure out who they are. They may go from trying to be an athlete to maybe joining the emo crowd to, to trying to be the prom king or prom queen. They're trying on these different identities. Now, all of the sudden, society is trying to cement them in the transgender identity rather than looking at it as a potential phase or a social contagion. Well, I think it's really important that teachers are aware of this and that um, other authority figures are aware of this because it can be incredibly confusing if you've, you know, you walk into a class and, you know, first day of school, there's, there's nobody who's transgender by the end of the year, 80% of the kids are transgender. <laughs> and that's not an exaggeration. I actually have heard of classes where that's happening. So it's really important for teachers to be able to identify this, to realize what's going on and to, to not to accept that this is, this is real, just to accept what it is, that this is a social contagion. These are kids who are experimenting with different identities and personalities, and that they absolutely should not be affirmed in their gender identity. And teachers are on, the, are on the front line of this, and you really do need to push back if the administration is telling you you have to affirm this, you have to agree with this, because this is incredibly unhealthy for children, unhealthy for the classroom, unhealthy for families, and unhealthy for society.